Well, shalom, and welcome to the Roundtable Talks. My name is Yeshaya Gruber, and today it is my great privilege to be joined by Mark Goodacre, who is Francis Hill Fox Professor of Religious Studies at Duke University. He is the author of Thomas and the Gospels and The Case Against Q, among many other works. Thank you, Mark, so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Good to be here. Well, we're looking forward to a lot of uh, interesting discussions. I know you've raised many questions that excite people's interest, those who are studying the synoptics and, and other Gospels and, and related topics. Maybe I can just start with a fun little question. Um, was Jesus a carpenter? <laughs> I think I did a podcast on that one time, you know. Um, Indeed, I'm getting it yeah. from your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, I, do you know what? I, once upon a time, had the idea of putting together a book of famous fallacies or, or myths about Christian origins. And one of those would be Jesus was a carpenter. I mean, it, it's not, it's not completely wrong, um, but it's, but it, it's, it's one of those things which is far too specific. Mark 6, 3, he's described as a tectone, and that basically means someone who works with material, someone who works with his hands. Uh, and I think probably our best English translation is something like handyman, something like that. So, you know, he, he might have worked with bricks, metal, wood, all sorts. They, they didn't sort of um, parse it out quite so clearly into carpenters and metal workers and builders and so on. So I refer people to your podcast for more on that. Um, but that's just an interesting tidbit, because as you said, uh, you know, people have these ideas mm -hmm. about the Gospels, about early Christian origins, many things that everyone knows or that are seen as certain. And I think a lot of your work does challenge some of those ideas, as well as ideas in academia that are seen as um, certain. So, you know, some of these concepts that people have in their heads have surprising histories. I mean, where do they come from? I think of just another little mm -hmm. incident like that that you've dealt with, which is uh, Mary Magdalena. Um, and wh where did this idea come from that she was a prostitute? That's a curious tale in right. itself, I mean, isn't it? The, yeah, I mean, the... Uh, thanks for the sort of the the compliment about about my work. I mean, I I do think that one of the things that energizes me in my scholarship is asking questions about things we think we know. I, I always, it, I mean, it, it, for some people, they hear the word consensus and they think, oh, I better believe that. I better go for that. I'm kind of the opposite from that. I hear the word consensus and I think, right, let's see if there's anything to challenge here, you know? So that, that's part of the way that I think. The Mary Magdalene thing in particular, actually now, now it is a consensus in scholarship that Mary Magdalene was not a sex worker. There's simply no evidence for that whatsoever in the New Testament or other early Christian texts. And um, I think it's one of the real victories of feminist scholarship on the New Testament that it is now accepted that she has been done a grave injustice by history in being called a prostitute. And uh, some New Testament scholars have, you know, have used even worse words uh, for her. But um, but yes, it, it's a, it is a complete fallacy. Where did it come from? I, I think it comes from the oldest game in the book, which is you've got four gospels. What do you do when you've got four gospels? Well, you either do what New Testament scholars do and contrast them with one another, or you do with what most Christians have done through history and you harmonize them. And if you start harmonizing, you quickly end up with Mary Magdalene becoming the woman in Luke 7, 36 to 50, who is described as a sinner with long hair. And people assume that that woman is some kind of sex worker. When she is conflated with Mary Magdalene, that's your route into her as this, her as this, this repentant sinner. And, and I think there's just one other side to it, which is that Hey, I'm, I, I'm a big lover of Jesus films uh, and analyzing Jesus films. And the thing is, the story of the repentant prostitute is a powerful story and people want that story. And when you have an attractive story, quite often what you want is a name to attach to that story. So, but, but it does the historical Mary Magdalene uh, grave injustice. That's the problem with it. Hmm. 
Somewhat related, um, I wonder, what about the idea that Jesus had a wife? Where do you fall on this question? I mean, some scholars, for example, would say that, well, he must have just because of cultural expectations, and, and they don't mm -hmm. necessarily think further evidence is needed. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas many religious uh, Christians would be scandalized by this idea because they've been mm -hmm. taught that he was celibate. So how do mm -hmm. you look at this uh, question as a New Testament scholar? I think it's entirely possible. I was going to say highly likely. I think it's entirely possible that the historical Jesus had a wife. <clears throat> One of the reasons, though, why I think the evidence tilts against it is that when Paul is talking about marriage in 1 Corinthians 9, he says, do you know what? He says, I know that I have the right to take a believing wife with me on mission as the brothers of the Lord do and Kephas. Now, what's fascinating about that is Paul could have said there something about Jesus. He could have said, yes. as the Lord himself did. He doesn't say that. And the fact that he even talks about Jesus's brothers taking their wives with them and Kephas, who's Jesus's closest disciple with him, then as uh, Jesus' closest disciple taking a, a wife with, with him, then you have to say, why would he not say, as the Lord did? Maybe he didn't know, but that's, that's kind of weak. You know, I, I mean, so I think that tilts the evidence against the idea of Jesus having a wife, but you can't rule it out. I mean, for example, it could be that Jesus was married in his 20s and was widowed. I mean, that could have happened, you know. So, um, but, but I think the key thing is, it's worth remembering that when you do historical Jesus work, there are many missing pieces. There are far, far more missing pieces than there are present pieces. 